it's safe to say that you probably haven't heard about this proposed new station. And whilst it would be relatively modest, the new station on the Wrexham Bidston line has the potential to serve up to 9,000 people who work at one of the 400 businesses spread across a sprawling 4.5 square kilometre site. People have been talking about building a station to serve Deeside Industrial Park for over 15 years and plans have since been drawn up to build a new station adjacent to the A458 Weybridge Road which would be within walking distance of Shot and Paper, Park Adfa, Great Bear and Toyota to name just some of the more well-known employers that would be close to the proposed new station. Transport for Wales has been developing plans since 2018 and by 2021 the plans had reached stage C of TFW's plans for works process, which is similar to Network Rail's GRIP process. Stage C is roughly the equivalent of GRIP stage 4, which involves preliminary design work. The original estimated cost for the station was around 15 to 19 million pounds. This would have delivered a fully accessible two-platform station with lifts and stairs, as well as potential for a 200-space car park and facilities for shuttle buses to turn around. Unfortunately, due to the recent spike in inflation, this cost will have likely increased to somewhere between £20 and £25 million. I know this cost must seem staggering for a relatively simple station, but this seems to be the going rate for an accessible two-platform station these days. But even with the high cost, I and others believe the station should be constructed, and I would go as far as to call it a no-brainer. Currently, the 9,000 or so people who work across four zones have limited choices when it comes to getting to work. People in Connors Quay and Shotton do have access to shuttle buses, but the only practical option for people from the Wirral to get to work is to drive, which just adds to the congestion on the busy A550 Welsh Road and A494. The new station would provide workers with the option to use public transport, which would also benefit workers from North East Wales. Although there is already a station located relatively close to the industrial park, it is not particularly convenient and is currently only a request stop. Before the new timetable was introduced last year, only a handful of services a day stopped at the station. People have argued that Harden Bridge should be more than sufficient for providing workers with access to rail services, and admittedly it is more convenient for Tata Steel and the Northern Gateway development. However, it isn't particularly convenient for the industrial park. To get from Harden Bridge to the main entrance of the Toyota plant for example would involve a 2.4 km walk or cycle, whereas Deeside Parkway would be just 1.3 km away. Harden Bridge is also an awkward spot to try and provide shuttle bus routes to and from, and the journey by road from the station to any of the zones within the industrial park would be lengthy. Deeside Parkway on the other hand could potentially be constructed with bus turnaround facilities on either side of the station, which would provide much better access to all four zones. Added to this the fact that Shot and Paper is undergoing expansion and Erin, the owner of the mill, has plans to build a new power station which means that Zone 4 is due to increase in size and employ more people. It could be argued that we need both stations and that Harden Bridge should be upgraded, especially with the development and housing being constructed as part of the Northern Gateway scheme. But this could be difficult, especially if the half-hourly service is introduced. The end-to-end -end journey time on the Wrexham Bidston line has always been tight, which became all too apparent last year when the Wrexham Bidston rail service fell apart, with Class 230s and Class 197s which work on the route unable to achieve a sub 60 minute journey reliably during the autumn and winter. This is the reason that the frequency was increased to 45 minutes, which actually improved reliability. I've recorded a separate video about that, which is worth watching, so I'll leave a link in the description and a card in the top right corner to that video. What this means is, it will be difficult to add extra stops without speed increases, which would provide more headway. But even with speed increases, if the half hourly service can be introduced, it could still potentially mean choosing between stopping at Harden Bridge or Deeside Parkway. If that were the case, I would certainly argue that there is a much better case for building a new station and stopping all trains there, rather than the new station being a request stop, which would ruin the business case, which already seems quite marginal. 
Unfortunately, due to the high cost, the government does not currently think that the station would provide value for money and has so far refused to fund the new station, even after two attempts to bid for levelling up fund money. But with the industrial park continuing to grow and congestion only getting worse on the A494 and A550, I would argue that the station should be constructed and the only way to reduce congestion is to improve public transport in the area which is especially important given that the upgrade of the A458, otherwise known as the Red Route, has been cancelled. The station could also act as a parkway in future if the service is increased to half hourly, and especially if one day we see through trains operating to Liverpool. If this were the case, it could become a more convenient station for people from Flint and arguably the northern part of Connors Quay to reach Liverpool. The term parkway has however recently fallen out of favour, but whatever the station is called, be it Deeside Parkway or just Deeside Industrial Park, I and others believe there remains a very good case for building the station, and I would encourage others who also agree to make the case, perhaps by contacting local politicians and business leaders, or if you'd like to know how you could get more involved, then head over to the Rex and Bisden Rail Users Association website, to which I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, just before I sign off, I'd like to say a big thank you to my Patreon and YouTube supporters who helped to make videos like this possible. If you'd like to consider supporting the channel, there are links in the description. Or if you're watching on TV, search Rail Focus Patreon.